Hi everybody and um, welcome back to our um, sixth tutorial on what we've what, what I've called a Tuscan house and I think it was Louise the other day told me that actually she'd found a photo of it somewhere else and it's a Spanish house um, but to me it's the Tuscan house so you know sorry for the people that live there because I've just moved you a little way out of Tuscany and into Spain yeah. but you might not yeah. notice. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. But you know, um, artistic license. Yeah, it's artistic license. I had no idea where it came from. It just sort of reminded me of Tuscany a bit, so I called it a Tuscan house. Anyway, um, let's see what we're up to today, where we're going, how we're progressing. Um, this, of course, is the reference picture. It'd be nice if we painted that, wouldn't it? <laughs> so that was what our painting actually looked like. But we're progressing. We're, we're doing well. I've seen versions of this. Uh, up to this stage on Instagram, on on Facebook, on Facebook pages and groups other than mine um, and I must admit it makes me feel warm and cosy inside when I see that people have actually and are actually following us along and uh, hopefully we're going to end up with something that we're going to be really proud of and proud to show off. On that note, just briefly before I get started, can I say that some of you are showing um, pictures that you've painted and have posted on the Miss Acrylic Paint -a Lots group. I am so pleased to see them. I'm always delighted when somebody posts um, a picture that, that a painting that they've done. Um, some of you, especially, you've been absolute beginners and you're really progressing. Susan Hall springs to mind, but there are others. Um, but what I'd like you to do, if you can remember, is always sign your work. It makes you feel proud of it, for one thing. And the other thing, people should know who painted it. You know, who knows where that painting is going to end up in the future. Um, and if you become a famous artist, then, it, you know, it would be nice. This is one of her beginnings, you know. Uh, and the other thing to do is put a label on the back or draw it right on in Sharpie, the date that you did it. So as ultimately further down the road, you can look back at your painting and say, that's where I was in January 2019. You know, this is where I am now. Look at my progression, that sort of thing. So always sign it and put a date on the back. And uh, that's all I wanted to say about that. Right, so we've got this Bougainvillea. It's quite, quite nice, I think. It could probably do with, a bit, with bits of bright green in through it. But we'll deal with that when we come to titivate at the end. We shall be titivating. The grand titivation. The grand titivation. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yeah, when we do that, we'll sort everything out. <laughs> um, we did the door on the last one. And I like the door. It, it's, I like it a lot. But what I would say is that this door is ever so slightly ajar. And I just need a ruler and I'm just going to make it, I'm going to put it wide in that black line that's down there just so that it looks like it is a jar um, for which I need my black. I haven't got any of my colours out today, well I have, I've got them all out. <laughs> So we'll just take them out as we need them. I just want a little bit of black. It's just getting on my nerves now, so I need to sort it. I'm just going to take... Um, I've not got any water. What's going on? What on earth is going on? Well, never mind. Like water, I shall not. show you something else that's of interest. These beauties are called Posca pens. 
P-O-S-C-A, pens. Um, the, by the company that makes the Uniball uh, fine liner stuff. Um, you know, really nice quality stuff. And I bought a set of, I think it's 12. Uh, you get black, white, you get gold, silver, and then you get um, a lot of different colours. But it's brilliant. I always sign mine with a Posca pen um, of late. It's just easier than doing it with a fine, fine brush. So the idea is you shake them up. Thank you very much, Mr Handyman. I don't need that colour wheel today. Um, how does it come in to do a video not having any water? It's a bit mad. So you shake them up, you press them down until you get the, the colour coming through. And then, let's just make sure this is where, exactly where I want it. These pens are made of acrylic paint. They are um, the same as what we paint with. So it's, you know, it's fine to use them on an acrylic painting. So I'm just going to put that there and then I'm just going to use my Posca light pressure just go up the side of this ruler and that's giving us a, a more clearly defined um, I think I could probably go over that again actually I want to push it back so it looks as I say so it looks a jar I'm just going to put that over the line that I've just done and just do another line you can get those pens in varying widths. Yeah, you can. This is the, the narrowest ones that they do. Yeah, I think I think that's fine. I think we get we're getting the illusion now that it's going backwards. But um, now I have. Look, I might use that actually for the for the trellis. I showed you how to use a liner um, pen brush. Liner brush to do the trellis where the bougainvillea is. We've already done. So I don't think I really need to show you how to use a liner brush for this trellis. I think we'll do it with Posca. Why make life difficult when it could be all so easy? They're also really good for if you're doing like um, a balcony with wrought iron um, stuff on it. Balcony stuff. Trellis. <laughs> trellis. Then do it with your white Posca pen. Um, it's not it's not cheating it's another tool that we have we like tools we like to accumulate as many tools as humanly possible and i'm making a good good go of it um i just need a little little angle shader this is not my normal one that i use but never mind it's come to hand so dip it in the water dry it off put a little bit of this black out I'm just going to go along the bottom here. To where the door ends. I'm just going to take that back a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of an angle on it. So it looks like it's a jar. There we are. I don't need to bother about the top because it's in shadow anyway, so you can't see it. But I think that, um, I like that better. Just a bit more life to it. Um, and this has got black shadow all along the bottom. which We have drawn in, but I'll just draw it in again. Um, just to give it some proper oomph. When I say draw, I mean paint. You know, I guess you you followed that one. The, br the paint isn't coming off my brush. One of two things is happening. I haven't got enough water on my brush or I haven't got enough paint on my brush. Um, and I think it's, in this instance, it's the latter. You can't get paint off that isn't on. Simple as. Right, okay. Yep, that's improved that loads with just those three lines um so now what should we move on to i think that we perhaps should move on to um this line this very bright line down here 
it does it does make a difference so i think that's we i mean i've painted this already in titan buff um so i can't really put my highlight on in the same color because it would never be seen so i got some white out uh, and just mix the tiniest bit of titan buff through it and then we'll get a highlight i'm going to squeeze quite a bit of this out because we invariably end up using quite a lot of white There we are. I just um, wanted to show you, I was having a look before to see about what colour we could make these flowers here. Um, I appreciate this, well, I'm saying, I don't think this is a bougainvillea. It looks a bit different to that. But for our purposes, that is indeed what it's going to be. Because bougainvillea have got loads more flowers, they're covered in flowers, um, and they're nice to look at. And, we need something over this side. I mean, this is a lovely photograph, one of those examples of photographs that don't immediately um, become good paintings because all our interest pretty much is over here. When you get to here, it just kind of peters out. Lovely photograph, but for us, we need some interest in this area to balance it up. So I'm going to paint this as if it were a bougainvillea. You can follow your reference photo um, if, if you want to and be slavish to it and um, I'm going to make that bougainvillea so I had a look um, on Google to see what colour bougainvillea actually comes in to see what choices we would have and it comes in pink purple orange yellow and white with magenta well I think we've covered the white with magenta here perfectly I don't actually know it came in that colour but obviously it's pretty botanically correct of course um, so we're left with pink purple orange or yellow so i'll stew on that for a while until we get there and then i'll make my decision sort of color we have. well i could but i actually want something quite maybe it's a bit different like orange the problem with oranges is it might not stand up so much to to that anyway we'll uh, we'll think about that we get a bit of um, a tight and buff out. I'm just going to mix it with a with a white. Let's give us a lighter version of this uh, titanium buff. But we don't want white. Um, white just saps the energy out of the painting pretty much. Painting like this. Yeah, I will always be drawn to it. Um, for here, it's not so bad. We painted only one coat, um, so it's not bright. Hit you in the face. White. Now then, brush this little angle shade. Where's my little angle shade? Here, this one. My uh, Dale Roney System Three. So let's just dampen the um, dampen the brush. Wipe it off. Go into here and. It's just, I think we could assist our, ourselves by having a ruler here. I hope you get it straight. I think that's pretty straight. Let's just check that we've got enough contrast. Mm, not so sure we have. I've picked up a bit of sort of whiter parts of the mixing. This is just where the sun's catching the corner of this uh, door thing, whatever it is. I'm sure it has a proper name. Yeah, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. And it just it just comes around here and stops there. So there we are. That's just given that a bit of light, um, which is pretty much all that needs. 
Now then, before we put the plank pots in, we need to have a look at these parts here. This one here, I think this is a plant. Um, but I also think that the white is old and mucky. So I think we're going to have to dirty down. Dirty down. Down and dirty. Exactly. Uh, dirty down this part here. This one over here um, looks amazingly clean. Oh, well, apart from the bottom down there. But this is a kind of, this is grey. So let's, let's have a look at greys that we can achieve. The obvious one being black and white. That is a grey. It's what we all know to be a grey. But you can achieve greys. Here's an interesting fact. Colour wheel, which I've said I didn't need. But if you've got, um, got a blue and you want to make a grey, add yellow to it or orange to it and it will grey it out. They cancel each other out and you'll end up with a grey and a much more lively grey than just black and white would give you. Same works for every, all of these on the colour wheel. Opposites always grey each other out. I'm just full of tips today for you. Full. Um, but given that we've got this colour here, after all that fancy, fanciness, I'm just going to, I think, use this titanium, uh, buff and titanium white mixture. Don't think that's dark enough, but I want some, I don't want to add any more black. So, let me put my poster pen in my book away. I'll just add a little bit of roll where it's a browny sort of colour, which has actually got more green in it than you would think. When you start putting white through raw umber, it's amazingly green. If this goes too bad, we can knock it back with opposite of green on the colour wheel. Correct, red. How many of you actually said that out loud? <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a better sort of grey. So I'm just going to pick some of that up and literally lay it on there, so I don't get um, just all one colour. Bit of streaking is nice. Not not that, Mister Handyman. Oh, I was just unbuttoning then. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. So I thought I best go in quick and say no. That woman that streaked at Twickenham, Erica somebody. Yeah. How come after all these years I still know she was Erica somebody? I don't know. I know. It's obviously etched in my brain. So this is working quite well, I think. There's a bright white section down here, so I'm just trying to avoid that. I want to say Erica Rowe, but... Yeah, that look it up on Google and see what, um, see what her name was. I really like the way that this, because we haven't mixed it, mixed, mixed it, we're getting different, different colours out of it, different shades and tints, which if you watched my live the other day, it was all about shades and tints and well, we were right, Erica Rowe. My goodness. I'd hate to tell you how long ago it was. Go on. 1982. 1982? That's before I was born. 37 years ago. 37 years. And we still remember the woman's name, I swear. Well, it's simpler times when nudity was just not on the telly. <laughs> Unlike today. You get um, nudity in the children's programmes, never mind anything else. Yeah, it's gone a bit far though now, hasn't it? It definitely has. I mean, there's no... What's the secrets for the bedroom? If you, you know... I don't like this the way this discussion's going, so I'm going to call an end to it. <laughs> call here. an end to it. Makes us sound even older than we are. I know. So oh, I don't agree with all that on the telly. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 so here when it gets to the step this bright white bit takes a little um, kink in 
and it goes down to land there on that step. which we shall be coming to very soon. I'm just leaving around this, you know, where the pot is, uh, just to make it easier really when you come to put the pot in. If you find it easier to paint over it um, and then come back and paint your pot in, that's, that's fine. It's, there's no right or wrong way. Oh, just painted my pot in. <laughs> just after saying I was going to leave it and promptly painted it in. They're all getting places now. I'm motoring. Right, so now we've got this sort of grungy side. I quite like that actually, and it's going to have a plant pot sort of like a dish plant pot here with this green whatever it is I don't know what it is but um, falling down now then on this side there is just the merest hint of a sort of grey line that goes down stops just just above the steps and I think it needs it because it's a bit devoid of, uh, of character so we'll do that Get some paint on your brush, woman. How can you paint with no paint? I know. Right, so we'll just um, just mark that in as near to that ruler as we can. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and then down here, there's a sort of um, clay terracotta type look to it which we will put in when we put the planters in, the plant pots, because it's that sort of colour. Um, what other colours have we got here? We've got a grey on this, on the middle part of this step. So while we've got it to hand, let's, uh, let's paint that in. I think this is where it goes. So, Mr. H. Yes, Miss P. What's going on? What's going on? I don't know. I mean, there were far simpler times back in the day, to be honest. Yeah, there were simpler. <coughs> Children didn't have to. Children could play. You know, daddies could pick the little girls up. I mean, now, for heaven's sake. And you, you know, you could say things without fear of being, being, I don't know, whatever, racist or sexist or whatever. Well, you know, when I was a young boy, you got your, got your thrills from the lingerie section in the Little Woods catalogue. Of course, this being sort of late 60s, early 70s by lingerie. I mean, yeah. I mean industrial strength girdles that were made out of the same material as welders aprons <laughs> and double gusseted pants that you'd swear were meant to be worn tucked up under the arms. Oh my goodness gracious me, I don't think that's right. <laughs> and then of course as a teenage boy, I mean even the damn art catalogue would do. I don't want to go down this road I mean, again. It's still turned by some full body heavy weight thermal underwear. That's enough now. That's like really, really enough. <laughs> it's about painting, not perving. Right, so we've got that step part of that on, the tread part. So let's go ahead and put the... Um, Put the, the steps in. I think it's a good time to do that now. I'll just put that in there. I think we need some um, some yellow or yellow ochre. There we go. I'll get a fair bit out because uh, 
not that much crap. So we've got plant pots to build. Plant pots to build. Actually, spring has sprung here. I'm in very, very northern England, like, you know, a few miles south of the border. Um, and really, we don't, we tend not to get any summer or anything. <laughs> we just have the same all year round. <laughs> But it's definitely spring has sprung. There's little lammies in the field, which I love. I love little lammies. And um, the daffodils and stuff are, are doing really nicely. They're all out when you drive around. It's gorgeous. So... Well, we get two days, really. Days when you can see the top of the fell, which means it's going to rain. And <laughs> days when you can't see the top of the fell, which means it's raining. That's yeah, true. It's true, I cannot tell a lie, that is exactly the sort of weather we have. So I think this is um, pretty good for the this part. So that was a little a little mix of um, yellow ochre, raw umber and the mix that we already had of the titanium white and the titanium buff. So it's a bit of a mix up. But if you've been following along, you'll have that mixture anyway, so that's not so bad. Once again, try not to over mix it if you can help it. Um, and then you'll get a little bit of motliness. <laughs> I'm gonna have to mix some more up anyway. Everything's drying up so fast. Let's spritz this again. Now, I don't you think I'm spritzing things because it's, you know, 90 degrees outside. It's just that it's about 90 degrees in here. A pickle picking my paint up today, it's just not staying on the brush. Let's lower this up. So, does that you know, there's a little fillet of white that comes down there to there? Fillet of white that sounds like fish. I love fish. My favourite. I like it much more than meat. But Mr H is a definite carnivore. If you put a plate down to him that hasn't got any meat on it, he thinks it's like a snack and dinner's coming later. Don't you, Mr H? What have you got teeth for? That's true, that is. And we do actually need some of the vitamins, etc. Come on, paint, play the game. That you find in meat, you know? I guess they were designed to eat meat. Okay, so there we go, finally. I've got enough paint off my brush. Right, I like that. That's good. The bottom edge here is not uh, square, as you can see. It's got a bit of fluffiness to it and I'm just going to um, clean my brush out on the towel. I'm just going to take a little bit of raw umber and soften it slightly like that into that mix that we had. And I'm just going to draw shadow lines along there. This isn't a straight line. Don't, don't make it straight, it will look odd. Along to there. That's lovely. Um, so now we've got this bottom one, which is a mix of the same sort of things, but paler, a, a paler in uh, value. So we'll take some of the white and titanium buff that we have. Probably rougher in texture. Yeah, well. rougher in texture. So we need a, a rougher, not so mixed mixture. Not been worn down by the thousands of feet that have trotted over the threshold. 
Yeah. Looks like quite an old house, doesn't it? Mm. Like by the doors and that, I would say. Um, so this down here is actually quite dark. This sort of corner here. And then it goes lighter, actually. Let's put some of that in there. It goes lighter as it comes along. And lighter again. I've got, I've got so much paint on my brush, it's ridiculous now. So this will ground the door and we'll feel like we've achieved something with the door um, that we did last time. Did you like the fact that I put two videos out last week? I thought you deserved it. Because you were all following it along so nicely. I thought, oh, I'll give you a treat. Try and cover up your um, transfer line. Mine's red and it's quite bright. I can easily see it. So just make sure that you cover it up. So there we are. I think that's more than acceptable. There's our image. There's our painter. Oh, that looks good. I'm happy with that. So I think possibly, possibly the time has come to deal, that's bone dry, time's come to deal with this funny old plant thing. Um, before we paint that in, I just want to add uh, a little plant pot that it's sort of in. Um, I'll just use a little bit of burnt sienna in with that mix, tiny bit. A bit too much for that. That's fine, that will do me, I think. Yeah, I've got other pots to do, but uh, not before we've done the wall business. This planty thing here. Now, it's just a shallow little thing. Not much about it at all, really. But it's obviously holding up this plant. Okay, I'll do for that. So now we need to get some greens on the go. And my choices of actual greens are these. Um, the phthalo, no, that's no, that doesn't belong. Hooker's green, yeah, I could tint that with white, tint it with yellow. And permanent green light, yeah, same thing, I could do that. But what I would say is this actually has got quite a sort of olivey cast to it. And the way to achieve olive green is by a magical mixture of a bit of black and a bit of yellow and a bit of white. But yeah. I haven't got any of that left. I'll use cad, cad yellow medium. See what we get from that. Yeah, you can see it. It's really, it's a really olive green colour. It's lovely. I like those um, colours from this part of the of the spectrum. I like chartreuse. I like person personally speaking. I'm talking. I really like those colours. 
so that's that. Um, I'm going to keep a bit of that in the darkest way there. I'm going to keep a bit of that and I'm just going to add some white to part of it here. So I will have a dark, a medium and a light of the same thing. Look at that, isn't that lovely? And that's always a good green that you've probably always got the ability to to make for yourselves because 10 to 1 on you'll have black, 10 to 1 on you will have a yellow. Um, so, you, you know, you've got the makings of a lovely green. Well, I think so anyway. So, let's do this. I'm not exactly sure how, but I'm pretty sure that the darkest green needs to be at the back for us to um, lay on our lighter colours. So it kind of bubbles over the top here. No more than that, really. And it just sort of hangs down. I'm using the, uh, the point of my angle brush. You can use a flat, use the corner of a flat. Um, nothing wrong with doing that. Because I've always seemed to have an angle brush in my hand. Angle shader. This comes down here and it goes right to the bottom. Right to there, which is where the step is. Um, I mean, you can see very little of this pot that we put in, but you can see a little bit of it. And up near the top, it's, it's pretty solid, really. It's foliage. There that goes all the way down to the back behind our um, urn on the wall. On the wall. Ernie. Ernie the urn. This, this is our dark. It kind of disappears there behind that. Uh, urn, urn. Uh, and then there's no more at the bottom. So we'll make that quite full of dark because, uh, well, it is. Not be definite. Not. Timid, don't be timid. Okay, so now I think we'll probably go, actually I think that goes further, nearly onto that white, well, on, onto the white really. But don't be timid with these because if you are, you won't get good coverage and it'll show up and it won't look good. Right, so that's the, um, the dark put in. Let's go for our medium one. She's delight. And it, it just sort of follows a similar path, really. Obviously. Don't cover up all your dark. Otherwise, it's a waste of time doing it. It's all trailing ivy, I wonder. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Up. I don't think it's necessarily ivy because it's hanging so sort of flat. Yeah. It's obviously some sort of Spanish thing. Or Tuscan if you like. Indeed. Well maybe the people in Tuscany went to Spain on holiday. 
to the house with them. To the house with them. <laughs> Put it back as a souvenir. No problem. <laughs> yeah. They've uh, got enough straw donkeys. <laughs> I thought they'd just take it brick by brick, rebuild it. Uh, Who's to know? Who's to know? More well, maybe I would like to know that there's people all over the world painting versions of their house. Indeed. Right, so we're now moved on to the light. Uh, and you need to be slightly more sparing with this. You know, we want it, but not everywhere. If they woke up one morning out the front door and there's 30 people all there with easels outside <laughs> yeah. staring at them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just here quite right where the sun's hitting it. Just look down to just the odd dot down here. So there we are, I think that's pretty good. What do you think, Mr. X? That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. You could always use your dear foot stickers to do that as well, of course. Yeah, I could, but I think it's just a bit too big to get in. So you can clearly see we've got dark, we've got medium, we've got our highlights looking good. So let's put these pots in. There's this one, this one, and there's a wee one there. There, actually, which is this one, another one of those magic pots that just hangs on the wall. I need some of those. Put these up, please, Mr. H. There you are. Build no. the house out of Velcro, I suppose. Out of Velcro? Yeah. Why? Build the entire... Because then you could hang your pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wallpaper. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah. Fed up with your child, wrap them in Velcro and throw them up the wall. <laughs> Hours of fun. Oh, your husband. <laughs> oh, your husband. Indeed. No, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get a little bit of burnt sienna out. Did I get some out before? I thought I did, but I can't see it on the palette, so. Where's my flipping? It's this colour here, I think. It's raw under that one. Um, Right, so we'll just get a bit of that out. Excuse me, I'm just going to have a drink. Ah, gin and tonic. <laughs> it's not gin and tonic. Definitely not. We don't drink in this house at all. Not that we're both alcoholics or something, we've taken the pledge. I mean, we just don't drink. I can't see the sense in it. But, you know, I know lots of people can't. When you grow out of it, I think. Well, I, I just, the way I look at it is, all my faculties were hard fought for. You know, anything I've learned or whatever, as I've progressed through life, they're all hard fought for things. And why would I want to be drunk where I lose my faculties? It doesn't make sense to me. But, no mind her. Let's take some of this and mix it with a little um, burnt sienna. Get a nice terracotta colour going. A little bit of our titanium buff in there. Look at that. That's lovely. On the paint oh yeah, this thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so this is our base colour. It's quite dark. Is that what you were? Is that what you were? Mm, at? Mr. H. No, 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 not at all. Oh, I thought you were only. Um oh, just to pass the time. I can't exactly see where this pot goes, you know. We'll put it down to there. I could keep telling you guys, the police, you know, painting police, are not going to arrive on your doorstep. They're not. 
absolutely not. Neither am I, neither is Mr H. You know, if you change things, that's absolutely fine. If you think something else is going to look better or you prefer to paint it or whatever, do it. Go ahead and do it. Because actually, if you do and it works, you'll feel really clever. And if you do it and it doesn't work, paint it out. It's only blooming paint. You know, it's not like we're conducting open heart surgery here. Right, so that's my... Well, the thing is, you want to paint, paint what it is, but you need to paint it so it looks right. Yeah. And sometimes what it is isn't doesn't look right. Yeah, that's very true, actually. You know, give it what it needs. Yeah. Not what it wants. When, uh, I, when I was um, painting in pastels, which is still, I think, probably my favourite medium of all. I love pastels. Um, but when I was painting in pastels, I went out, took some photographs of sheep in the field, um, came back home and drew some, uh, painted some. And, yeah, one that I did, I painted slavishly, pretty much slavishly, Thank you. Um, this guy um, in the grasses, his coat looks, you know, I'm pretty pleased with his coat to be honest. But when I show it to people, they go, Oh, those eyes are wrong. Well, I can promise you they're not wrong. That is where that sheep's eyes were. But I should have done it and made his eyes more like a dog's eyes, and then people would have thought that was right. So I haven't changed it because it hangs in our house, we like it and we know it's accurate, but people that look at it don't get it at all. I'm just going to put another little bit of um, uh, birdsey in into this because it's not standing out very well against our against our house. It's funny doing videos because you don't get any interaction with you. You know, nobody's asking questions or saying hi or whatever. It's just it's just me and this reach. Which is always a dangerous thing given the airtime. <laughs> yeah, well, so far we've covered. Um, well, let's not say what we've covered. We don't need to go back to there. We don't need to go back to there. It's just it was different times. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, different times. I mean, back I mean, in my day, metrosexual meant getting lucky in the back of a Austin Rover small hatchback. Once again, I'm not going there, all right? I'm just not. Nothing you say to make me bite is actually going to make me bite. So, move along, jog on. Of course, if you were daft enough to buy an Austin Metro, it probably meant you lived at home with your mother. So getting lucky consisted of a Friday night when she was at the bingo. No! A copy no, of Charlie's no, Angels no, on no, VCR. No, 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 And Stop. a box of tissues. No, that is totally unnecessary. Totally. We didn't need that. We did not need that. I will have strong words afterwards. That's just rude. Yeah, that's just rude for the sake of it. So that's got... Um, bit of paint on there that doesn't belong on there. I have to wipe it out because it's not for... And then it's got a sort of um, this belly part of it here. This is where the light's coming off it. And same slightly further down. And here. And it just sort of peters out towards the, towards the middle. That will dry down, so I think actually, by dry down, what I mean is when, all acrylics, when they dry, they dry to a darker um, shade than when you first put them on. So, 
eventually after working with certain type of paint for so long you'll realize how much it will darken down therefore how much lighter you've got to make it than you want it does that make sense or you can just put it on and if it dries down uh, go back over it with some a lighter color I'm just going to get some real bright colour there and just hit this highlight up here. Like that. That's looking alright. This is Saturday and I know you always watch it on a Saturday. But for us, we've normally done the videos. Um, we did Birds and Blooms uh, video through the week and put that out on a Friday night on YouTube. And this Tuscan house goes out on a Saturday night. But normally we videoed them through the week. So, you know, we just sit there with our feet up and let YouTube do its job. Uh, this week, however, I don't know why, but we haven't managed to get um, the videos done. I did have a bird and bloom video which which is great and pleased about that um but the tuscan house no i think it's because we did the live oh yeah for, that's for the right. for the american group that's right yeah i did a live for um acrylic art paintings group over in america um which sat my strength for painting it didn't really but Lives are quite stressful to do, um, and particularly in groups that you don't know, if that makes sense. Right, so I'm back to my black. Has it dried up? Mm, pretty much. Those of you that follow me um, will know that I now have a newfound love for golden acrylic open paints, which stay open, um, as in they don't dry up for a really really long time and for us with particularly here in the studio it's always warm um, and i'm always using them for probably over an hour but whereas the golden open can stand that the uh these ordinary uh well sonelia art or abstract or the golden they can't they can't stand it they just <laughs> shrivel up and go away and leave me alone so this has got um, a little black line under here, which is like a, just a shadow. And it's got its iron work just under that fattest bit of its tummy. Of course we've watched it and spent a fair bit of time watching the curling this week. Yeah, it's the World Curling. The Men's World, men's curling. world curling Championships. And um, I'm Scottish and you get fed up watching things like rugby and football and stuff like that because Scotland's just rubbish at all those sort of sports. We used to be really good at rugby but those days are long gone. And um, so we found a sport that Scotland are good at. In fact, I think they invented it. I think the Canadians say they invented it, but they didn't. Scotland invented it and we're quite good at it so that's where all the curling stones come from as well yeah it is yeah. a little island off the west of uh, of Scotland called Ailsa Craig not far from here really no it's not that far from here um this is just a seems to be a thing it's standing on um this one's got a similar one so let's put that in as we go this is raw umber and black and it's coming out very dark but you know i really want to make some progress today because you feel like you're actually getting closer to the end yeah right so um Seeing as we've got this colour out, I think I'll just do this plant pot here, which is actually not that sort of colour, but that's what it's going to be. 
and oh, everything's a little dry in it. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. I'll go back into this colour. A little, little bit of uh, rose here. Burnt here. We'll just paint this little pot in. Got the paint out. Paint mixed. Just put it, put it in. A tiny little pot. I don't know why I felt the need to put these tiny little pots hanging off the house. But you know, it's not for me to question, is it really? Let's be fair. Mm -hmm. And then if we hadn't, we wouldn't be painting it, I suppose. Yeah, so it must have had some interest, mustn't it? Otherwise we just wouldn't be, we wouldn't be doing it. So that needs some plantage stuff in there. Um, that's it, I think that's it. Oh no, this is plant pot here. This is a weird little plant pot. Put it there so we'll put it in and it'll break up this uh, this side of the door. It looks to me like the door's the there's a number or a some identifier of the what house it is on the side of the door. I'm not doing that. Um, I think if we painted it in, for me it wouldn't look right. So I'm I'm just leaving well alone. So there's that funny little plant pot that's there. So right, okay, we're making progress. I don't know what that went is there. No idea. Anyway. So I think we, it's time to move on to the green. Uh, oh no, we need to put our trellis in. That's the only thing that's behind that, I think. Yeah. So shall I use Posca pen or a liner brush? It's entirely up to you. Give the pen a go. Give the pen a go. Why not? Um, shake it up again. Let's spray these again. I might have something workable when I get back. A bit of damp tissue? No, because it, it, if you put it on, I think it'll just stick it out. I've defeated the whole object. Right, let's do this. This is quite a long way away from me. But I can see that it comes down here. I can see that it comes down here. I'm not altogether certain that this is actually easier than that. I'm putting it in with a a fine liner. Mm, then go to a fine liner. No, I've nearly finished. But I don't. I think if you were starting out and you weren't sure what you were doing with a fine liner, I think it would be beneficial. I think if you've got the hang of what a fine liner does, then I don't think you'd gain much. But anyway, there you go, it's in. Right, I'm going to leave it at that. For the time being let the pots dry and whatever and then we'll come back and we'll put the greenery in and this bougainvillea stroke rose bush whatever it is um, but i think now is a good time to stop um, while you're gone i'm actually going to put this plant pot in that's all i'm going to do just put the plant pot in then when you join me again we'll put the all the greenery and the rest of the flowers that's got to go in. So thanks very much for joining along with me. I'm not sure that we achieved masses today, but we, you know, we've been doing some tidying up as we, as we've gone on, um, and we're adding interest now to this side of the painting. Um, so enjoy it, have fun with it. Please post it everywhere you can, <laughs> and say you know that it's um, Miss Painter Lot's tutorial on YouTube. If you can, that would be great. Um, 
and I'll see you very soon. Thanks very much.